What's up YouTube? I'm really excited today to bring you the next installment in the TrueNAS Fundamental Series where we go over every aspect of the TrueNAS operating system one tab at a time. Today we're going to be talking about data sets. So you see here that I haven't really messed with this at all. The only thing we have here is the tank data uh, pool right now. This is going to consist of basically just a single drive. So in order to add information here, I can't add information directly to a pool. Everything has to be done in either data sets or directories. Today we'll be talking about data sets. So let's go ahead and add our first data set. The first data set I'm going to add is going to be called, let's call it configs because we're going to have to use this one a lot. And I'm going to want to use this with the data set preset. Now you'll see here the data set preset, this is basically for permissions. I'm gonna use the apps one first because the apps is the most likely one you're gonna use for any data set that interacts with applications. So I'm gonna hit save here just like that. This is gonna create my data set. And within my data set now, I can create either sub data sets or additional other data sets under tanks to interact with this. So configs right here is now my new data set and it's set for apps permissions. When you use the default apps permissions, it's gonna give you what's called an ACL level permission. So these are the ACL permissions right here. Let's go ahead and look at those, edit. So this is what they call the ACL editor, and this is gonna show you exactly where you are. This is the owner and owner group of this data set. These are all the built-in, the, this is the access control list for everybody that has access to this. So these are pretty standard. The owner and group here, which are listed right above. Uh, there's built-in users here as well, and there's built-in administrators, that's pretty cool. But we also have this line here, user apps. So the user is apps, the ACL type is allow, basic modify. That's to make sure that anybody within the apps group that needs permission uh, can get permission. Now we can do other things like this as well. So for example, if I want to go ahead and edit this ACL, let me go ahead and add another user in here. I'm gonna call this user YouTube, just for the purposes of this demonstration. So I'm gonna add a user here called YouTube. I'm gonna disable the password on it, which is fine. And I'm gonna leave everything else here the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Okay. So now I have a user named YouTube. So I'm gonna come back here to my data set and I'm gonna to go to configs and I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna add another user. So let's add an item here. It's gonna be a user and the user is asking, hey, who do you want it to be? I want it to be YouTube. And in this case, I'm gonna give it the same permissions as user apps and I'm gonna save access control list. So this is just a really easy way to set up a data set that's defaulted for apps. And now I can add this user that I just created into my ACL. So now when we come over here to my ACL, you'll see here is an additional line for YouTube. Now, just like that, I can also remove that user. So I'm gonna come over here and just click X and I can click save control list. Now, when I do that, it's gonna remove this user and remove them from uh, just this data set. Now, this can also apply to sub data sets. So let's create another uh, data set here. Let's pretend I'm gonna do a config, so maybe something like Uptime Kuma. And my, and my preset is gonna be apps because Uptime Kuma is in fact a Docker app that you could probably run if you wanted to. So now here, I'm gonna create a sub data set under configs. I'm gonna show you what happens when we make an adjustment to the configs directory. So the configs is already set up for that. So I'm gonna add a data set, I'm sorry. I'm gonna add, edit this ACL here and I'm gonna add my user YouTube back in, just like that. Now you'll notice I didn't click this box to apply permissions recursively. I purposely skipped this to show you how when you edit uh, a top level data set, the bottom data set is not affected. So you'll see here YouTube is in here. And when I click Kuma, YouTube is in here. So even though I adjusted my configs directory, just because I did that, all these other directories that I may have underneath here, data sets, like sub data sets are not affected. Let's go back in here, let's edit these permissions and let's apply these recursively. And you're gonna get a warning, it says, this affects every directory, make sure you're aware of that. I'm gonna hit continue. And if you have child data sets here also, it'll apply to that. So I'm gonna also click this for, sub, for child data sets and I'm gonna save access control list. Now this is gonna mean everything under my configs directory is now gonna be affected by this ACL change. So now when I come over to configs, you'll see here my YouTube user is here. Let's go to Kuma and here's my YouTube user. So look at that. Now subsequently, just because I have that there doesn't mean it applies everywhere. Like, so I can come over here and remove this user here, save my access control list. And now just because I removed it for YouTube, for uh, the uptime Kuma data set, from this user YouTube does not mean it's gonna change anywhere else. So just because now I did that, you'll notice YouTube is gone, but the configs directory here, YouTube still exists. So that's a really e quick 
primer on creating some data sets and also a sub data set and then how to adjust the ACL. ACLs, I think, are a li they're, they're touch and go when it comes to working with them. You, you can see here it's pretty straightforward to add or remove users. And of course, if you're going to have SMB shares, SMB shares are going to want to be able to use ACLs. But ACLs are not the only way to go. Uh, and I tend to use NFS shares. So for me, POSIX permissions are the ones that I do. So let's, let's add another data set here. I'm going to another edit data set here. I'm going to call this data set uh, photos, for example. And I'm going to keep the data set pre uh, preset as generic. This is going to allow me to use POSIX permissions. So let's come over here. I'm going to hit save. There we go. So now I've got a data set called photos. You can see here, these are called, these are the Unix permissions, but are also called POSIX permissions. So when I come over here and edit these, you'll see this looks totally different than what I saw before. I don't have a huge list of things. I basically just get an owner, uh, a user, a group, and then other. So that's what this is, user, group, and then other. So these direct, these all represent in Unix terms, um, this would be a 755. Five. So read counts as a 4, write counts as a 2, and execute counts as a 1. So if I was to total this and by row, this would be 4, 5, 6, 7. A 7 permission means all of these boxes are checked, which means full permissions for the user. The group is a 5, meaning 4 from the read column, 0 from the write column, and a value of 1 from the execute column. Same here for others. This is a 755 owned by root root. So that's the way this looks right now. I can change this. So for example, say I want to add apps in here. I can change this to be apps. Let's come over here and we're going to type in apps. Uh-huh. And now we're going to type in apps. Okay. And now say, here's what I want to do. If I'm doing that, I want to do something more like this. This is a 770. Seven meaning read, write, and execute for the user, which is apps. Read, write, and execute for the group, which is apps. Uh, and nothing for other, which means if you're not a, either the user apps or the group apps, you can't interact with this data set at all. So let's let's save this permission set. Uh, Got to do one more thing too here. We have to change this one. Every time you do this, and I'm glad I actually made that mistake, you have to apply the user. And here we have to apply the group. There we go. Now we can save. So now you'll see here, Apps and apps have seven, seven permissions, read, write, execute, read, execute, and others have zero, meaning no permissions at all. So now I change my photos to seven to apps, apps, seven, seven, zero. I can edit this again and I can say, hey, um, I need to change this to a different user. I need to change this to my YouTube user and I'm gonna leave the groups as apps. I'm gonna do it just like that. So now we have YouTube's apps. Now let's add another data set here. Uh, I'm gonna keep it as generic. It's gonna be tank photos. Um, I'm gonna say, um, this is 2025, for example. So these are going to be all the pictures from this year. Now here, you'll notice that I all the permissions I had for my photos are totally different than what's 2025. So same deal, we want to do, let's start by doing this recursively. So I'm going to apply this user, apply this group, and I'm going to apply it recursively, and I'm going to get the warning, yes, I do want to apply it to everything recursively, and I want to apply it to all child data sets. So now you'll see here 2025 matches the photos permission data set. I could always come in here and edit this separately uh, or do or change things around so it's a little bit different than that, but it's totally okay, for example, for me to come up here and root and we're gonna apply this user and we're gonna save it. So now we, even though photos is YouTube apps, my 2025 folder is root apps. So that's possible just to go back and forth like that. I could also switch this to ACL permissions. Let's come back up here to photos. Let's go to edit and let's go to set ACL. So I'm going to set a preset ACL uh, and let's go POSIX admin, just like that. Now POSIX admin is automatically going to populate all these things for me. So maybe this is a little bit complicated. Maybe I don't want to do that. Let's come back out to my data sets here. Let's go to photos. Let's go to edit. I'm going to set an ACL and I'm just going to set a custom ACL. This way I don't have to deal with all those random things. So here we go. Right now we have a user as the owner, which is YouTube, and the group, which is apps, and they have 770. So this is what the POSIX permission 770 looks like for YouTube apps if I was viewing it through the ACL. So now let's do the opposite. Instead of going from a POSIX to an ACL, let's go from an ACL to a POSIX. So let's go look at my Kuma data set, and we're going to edit this, and I don't want to use the ACL. Let's say, for example, just for this, for uptime Kuma, I want to use a POSIX, even though the root directory of this, the root... Uh, data set is actually ACL. So I can strip the ACL just from this. And I do want to remove from child data sets. I'm going to say strip ACLs 
There we go. So now I'm gonna come back up to config. So you'll notice config still has the ACL permissions, but Kuma itself is now on POSIX permissions. So now I can edit this and I can make this apps apps same way I did before. It's 770. And I'm gonna apply this recursively, even though there's nothing underneath it, it's no big deal. just like that. So now that we've done that, we can see here our configs directory is ACL with apps in YouTube, but our Kuma directory is now apps app 770. So that's a kind of way to go forwards and backwards from both ACLs uh, and POSIX permissions, being able to switch them up, being able to create data sets and sub data sets within TrueNOS. Now this can get a little more advanced. So for example, when I do an add data set here, you'll notice there's an advanced options. Under the advanced options, we have the options to do things like quotas to set a maximum size and it's child data sets. We can do, we're inheriting all the alerts, but you can change that if you want. Um, and in this case, we have the ability to add comments and syncs and the compression level. There's a whole lot of things in here, case sensitivity. All these things are editable if you want to go ahead and do that. I do not recommend you mess with really any of these settings unless you need something very, very specific. Usually the basic options are enough you're not gonna really wanna mess with advanced options unless, for example, the only reason I usually see people do advanced options are quotas. So for example, say I'm sharing this data set with a bunch of other people and I don't want them to load up my TrueNOS server with a ton of data. I can set a quota in this case um, or like a maximum. So for example, say I only want them to be able to do 10 gigabytes. This could be the maximum for this data set. So even though it's on the tank pool, which might have a lot more space than just 10 gigabytes, I only want to allow my users 10 gigabytes of space so that my TrueNOS isn't just full of stuff from possible shares from other people or accidental overwrites by any other program or anything that I'm using. So that's probably the only thing that I ever use the advanced settings for. Everything else I don't touch at all. So that's just a little, Quick thing on the advanced settings, but this should get you started uh, with getting data sets up and going within your pool once you have a pool and then setting your permissions accordingly. Permissions are the hardest things to get right. The easiest thing to do to tell if you're having a permissions issue is to use POSIX permissions at 777. So this is what a POSIX permissions at 777 looks like because user group and other all have all access. It doesn't matter who my user and group is because I'm basically letting any user and group here in this case have access to this data set. So this is called 777 permissions. You can see rewrite execute for everybody. If I have 777 permissions and I'm still having permissions errors, it's not on this data set because 777 means there are no permissions. It is completely wide open. There's no restrictions at all. So that's a quick way to say it's a troubleshoot in the event you think you're having permissions issues, whether or not it is the data set you're working with. So I hope you guys like this video. Again, like and subscribe to this channel. I hope you guys are loving the series on TrueNOS. If you guys want to see anything specific, please let me know. If you really want to say thank you, please buy me a coffee.